Here we have a standard Windows computer, and here is a standard pair of headphones. If I want to change the volume level that's playing through the headphones, I need to click on this small icon in the bottom right corner of the computer and slide the awkward slider up and down to get the perfect volume level that is required. But of course, this gets incredibly annoying incredibly quickly. How am I supposed to change the volume when I'm using full screen application? The only solution is to alt tab out of this application and adjust the volume in the bottom right corner, then go back into the program which is just an extremely convoluted process for something so simple. Of course, most speakers don't have this issue because many of them, like this speaker system I have here, it has a potentiometer which I can already turn to change the volume. So why can't I do the same for my pair of headphones? In order to build this volume control module, we will need this Arduino Nano to tell the volume controller what to do. And to change the value of the volume, we'll be using this potentiometer. It's the same as a variable resistor or a rheostat, and we'll be using it as an analog input into the Arduino, sending that Arduino value into the computer using a C-sharp program to read that value and set that value as the volume, which is much simpler than clicking an icon and using a slider. Now that we have the components, I'll show you how I connected them all. It's very, very simple. All I did was get this small breadboard put the Arduino inside there and uh, the potentiometer just goes on the side there and then I can use the wires to jump to the corresponding places so here we have uh, uh, green which is in the middle going to analog zero because that is the signal pin then uh, positive and negative and that's that's it that's the whole circuit Now that we've done the hardware, I'll show you how I wrote the really short Arduino code. So first we declare the pin for the potentiometer, which happens to be zero. Then this part is important, because the way we're doing this, which may be really convoluted, is writing every value into the serial port constantly. So that's a board rate of 9600 basically is what that means so that I start the connection here uh, and then this part is reading the value from pin 0 which is where the potentiometer is so this is a value from the potentiometer then this is mapped between 0 and 100 which are probably the wrong way around right now but I'll fix it later because potentiometers are uh, generally from their values are 0 to 1023 which means there are 1024 values and that's a power of two, of course. And this just prints it into the serial monitor. Um, this sounds complicated, but all basically all it does is this. So it's constantly writing the value into its serial port. So as we can see, we're getting uh, 59 here and fluctuating between 33 and 32. But oh, there we go, 98 is pretty stable. Yeah, some of the values aren't aren't that stable as uh, we get a bit of fluctuations but it's okay I'm sure it'll be fine so for the Arduino code that was pretty simple as is the C sharp code that I'm using to communicate between them both so the way we control the volume is by declaring a serial port doing the same thing as it has to be make sure it's the same board rate on both make sure it's the same com port uh, this is just uh, declaring the uh, playback device volume, which right now happens to be 100. Uh, then you just write the line into the console, and then some try catch box because otherwise everything happens to break. Uh, open the port, otherwise just close it, even though you can't actually do that. Um, and then you write line. Please plug it in, and then here's. Here's the actual program, okay. So, if the port's open, then the value that you get out of it, you need that, which is uh, the Arduino value that we wrote into the serial port earlier. Uh, read that line and store that in a variable, which is a string for now, we'll get back to that. Then the volume is this value, but you have to convert it to a double, and the double is basically a number value. And then you write that into the uh, console just because I can. Uh, otherwise, please plug in your volume 
control module. And that is it, that's it, that's all the code, and that's pretty much finished. So if I show you now, if we run the program, then it will immediately crash because everything's gone well. But if we run it again, there we go, right. Now it's getting the current volume from there. And if I'm changing it here, That here it just looks like the regular volume, but here is where you should look. And as you can see, that's up to 100, that's about 50, and down to zero. And that's working quite well. I'm doing this in real time, there's about a millisecond of delay. Actually, no, there's more than that. Maybe five. But it works incredibly well, as you can see here. And I'm quite surprised by that. There's probably a much more efficient solution than this. This is what I'm sticking with.